All right, last time we looked at the, the Twitter, um, favorite Twitter search, and we were going through some of the methods. And what I want to do today is I want to show you originally how it worked. And then I want to go through and talk about a change that I made. Because there's one, one feature of it I didn't really like, and I thought, you know, we should, we should change this. That would be a good either lecture or activity possibility. Um, the way it worked originally is like this. There is your favorite Twitter searches, and there was on the bottom of the screen a clear button. And the clear button cleared everything. All right? Let's, now let's take a look at the code that did that. And then we'll talk about the code that I changed. Uh, to do that. So, originally the code looked like this. Of course we have our clear tags button that has a listener for clear tags button listener. All right. If we go to that, we can see it. And what this does is, it's again, it's an anonymous class. It sets up a class to first clear the buttons. So it gets rid of all of the um, things in the user interface, then it goes and gets rid of the stuff in the shared preferences. All right. So it calls a clear buttons method, and then it calls these methods on the um, shared preferences that essentially creates a shared preference editor, clobbers all the tags from it, and then applies those changes. All right. Um, the clear buttons method is up here, and all it does is it removes everything, removes all the views from the, the query layout. Um, one thing I don't like on, on, uh, on this code, just uh, editorialize for uh, a second, is I don't like the way in which it sort of does this in two pieces. All right. Actually, I skipped one piece of this. It, it displays a confirm first. It displays an alert before it clears everything. But this has a code to, to clear the shared preferences here and clear the buttons up in, a, in another function. That doesn't really make sense to me. Um, but that's neither here nor there. That's not really a big issue. All right. Here's what I want to be able to do instead, though. Um, and, and so it came up. You could save your searches. You click the clear button. It asks for a confirm. And then it gets rid of it. So, here's what I want to do instead. If I go in and add a couple of queries, so I had a couple of nonsense queries on here. All right. I wanted to add a checkbox. You can see right, ne right next to that is a checkbox. All right, so that you didn't have to clear all or nothing. That you could instead um, choose what it is that you want to declare. So you could selectively clear. So I could say I want to clear this one, but I don't want to clear the other one, as opposed to all or nothing, and then. Clear selected tags, I change that from clear tags to the verb, verbiage saying clear selected tags. I click this, I still get my dialog, and I get rid of that. All right. So, let's talk about how we're going to do it. All right, let's talk about, or let's talk about how I did it. And the nice thing is, is I have both versions of code here. I have 
this version that, that's completed, and I have the original version here. So let's look back at the original version. And the original version, again, has a button for the clear tags listener that popped up a dialog to confirm the deletion. And if you say that you want to delete it, it calls that clear buttons function that gets rid of all the views. Whoops, this part of the query table layout and gets rid of everything in the shared preferences. So it clears out both of those. All right. Let's think of what would have to change to get the functionality that I have, to get the checkbox there. We obviously have to make changes to the UI, and we have to make changes to the processing code. All right. Where are we going to change the UI? Where do we make the change of the UI to add the checkbox? Any thoughts on that? In the main XML? Do we have another answer? Okay. Well, actually, if you remember, this particular example has two XML files. It has the main XML and it has the new tag view. And the new tag view is like that mini XML that contains the XML to create that one row. All right. So right now, when it, or, or in the original one, when it created that one row, it created it with two buttons. All right. Now we're going to create it with two buttons and a checkbox. So if we look here in our new tag view, we'll see that I added to the two buttons a checkbox. All right. I added to the two buttons a, ch uh, a checkbox. So now every time we add a row, there's a new checkbox. All right. So that was the first change I had to make. If we look at the original, the original only had the two buttons. Button, button. All right. So, that made the change to the UI. Okay? So, we've changed the UI. Now we have to add the processing code to do that. And as you can imagine, that's the one that is a little bit harder. All right? So, one thing I did is, first thing I did, is I put all the code in the clear buttons method. We'll take a look at that method in more detail, but I put all the code in the clear methods event. And therefore, the on click listener for the clear button doesn't do anything except clear calls that clear buttons. That makes more sense to me. I don't know. I, 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 you know, I guess that isn't horrible, but it makes sense to me not to have some of the code here and some of the code there. So I got rid of this code, and all the code that I have is now in that clear buttons. All right. Let's think conceptually what we want to do. Let's go in and add a couple more rows here of just garbage stuff. Conceptually, what, what do I want to do? All right. What do I want to do? When I'm deleting, I, let's say I check a couple of these and I click delete. What do I want to have happen? Okay. Okay. The, the matching what? The matching tag in the purchase file. Okay. So you have to, as you're looping through that, find the matching one. Okay. Um, right. Um, there's two things we have to get, there's two things we have to make right here. All right. We have to make right the safe preferences, and we have to make right the display. 
All right. Do we already have code to make right the display? Yes. What is that code? Well, no, that's, that's to add stuff. That's to add stuff to it. All right, so that part's taken care of. Yeah, when I refresh the screen, I already have a function called refresh buttons. All right. And with the refresh buttons, if I pass it a null argument, it redraws the whole screen completely. Okay, so what I could do, let, let, let's follow this through. I have two things I have to, to handle. I have to handle the visual part of it, and I have to handle the save preferences part. All right, here's sort of my thought process of what I want to do. If I can get the save preferences part right, I can call the refresh buttons function that's already written with a null argument and it will get the GUI part right. So I just cut my work in half. <laughs> All right. All I have to do now is get the save preferences part. Well, how do I get the save preferences part? Well, too many buttons to press there. Well, I'm going to loop through these. Okay, I'm going to loop through these things these table rows, all right? And we'll talk about what those are in a minute, but we know them to be table rows. I want to loop through these. I want to look at the checkbox, all right? If the checkbox is checked, then I want to go into the save preferences and get rid of that preference entry that's tag matches the tag of this text button, all right? Because those buttons have on them the name of the tag for the search. So I'm going to loop through these. All right, I'm going to loop through these. I'm going to look to see if the checkbox is checked. If the checkbox isn't checked, who cares? Go on to the next one. I then I just thought of something. I might have a bug. We'll see. All right. Uh, I then want to go in and um, if it is checked, I want to delete it from the save preferences. All right? And then when I'm all done, all right, when I'm all done, I want to clear out everything in here and then call the refresh buttons again. I'm going to go and change my code a little bit. When I was debugging, I thought something was going on that wasn't. And therefore, Clear a specific item, right. 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 Okay. All right, we're back in business. All right. I just cleaned up my code a little bit because the code would have been harder to read. So, all right. So, let's look at the code that does this. First of all, what is, what contains all the rows of buttons? 
Well, it's the field that we have that is called query table layout. Query table layout is a table layout. All right. And there's a table row for each element in there. All right. So we start out, there's no rows in the table. Each time we iterate through and we add a row, there's a new row in there. All right. So effectively what we want to do is we want to loop through all the rows that are in the table layout and then the fun starts. All right. So let's look at the code that does that in the clear buttons method. All right. So this is inside a loop. All right, so I'm going to iterate through. And I say, and there's a couple things to know. A table layout, we can Google that. Let's look at the methods that are available for a table layout. If we look here, all right. Table layout is a, a, a descendant of linear layout, which is a descendant of view group, which is the descendant of view, all right. If you read this, the first line is instructive. A layout that arranges its children into rows and columns. All right. So the idea here is that the children of a table layout are the table rows. So if we look here into the methods, we'll notice that there really don't seem to be any methods relevant to uh, grabbing the children associated with the table layout on that level. But if we look through the an uh, uh, its ancestors, I believe it's in view. We'll see that in the superclass, there's a number of methods that we can use associated with the table layout that are defined on the view that allows us to find out how many children a view has. All right? And um, get those children one at a time. All right? I think the squirrel uh, that's powering this machine must be getting a little tired here. Um, All right, let's scroll through and look at this. Uh, again, this class represents the basic building blocks. In other words, this is an ancestor of most of the controls. And right, I stand corrected. Maybe it was on. Yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a get count of children and there's a get a particular child. Maybe that's in the linear layout. All right. At any rate, um, if we had faster internet, I'd go through this. But the idea is, is you want to learn about the component that you're working on. You want to learn what makes it tick. All right. After class on Tuesday, I guess, I started thinking, it's like, I don't like that. I want to be able to pick the ones I delete. So... I just started playing around with it, and it's like, okay, it's in a table layout. You know, I have to be able to get the stuff in a table layout. After I did the research, I found out that, again, a table layout has children. All right? And we can get those children, and we can loop through them. So that's what this line does. 
for i equals zero, i less than table layout, get children count, i plus plus. You all familiar with that syntax, right? It will loop through for as many children as there are from zero through the number of children minus one, because again, since we start numbering with zero, we want to end with the number of children minus one. All right. I can use the get child at to grab a pointer to the nth child or the ith child. So the first time through, I'm grabbing child zero, which is the first table row, then child one, then child two. I know it's a table row. How do I know it's a table row? Well, because it's a table. I've rigged the deck. I'm only putting table rows in this, so I know that that's a table row. So I can cast get child at to table row and make it a table row. All right. Then for the table row, I can find the checkbox and I can find the tag using our old friend find view by ID. All right. Because apparently this find view by ID is in the ancestor, so you can apply that to any visual control. Because any visual control can have a bunch of uh, stuff in it, right? So the, the, the main layout is a visual control, is a view, all right? And we can go and we can find by ID. That table row, which is inside of a table, each table row is a view of its own, all right? So we can say find view by ID and use the ID of the checkbox. So we can find the thing in that table row with an ID of checkbox delete. We can find the ID, or we can find the button in that row that has the ID of new tag button. Yeah. Yeah. If you notice, if you look here, That's what adds them dynamically to it, at plus. So every time we add one of these, it adds it. Now, we can look for that ID in a table row, and there's only going to be one of them, right? For each table row, there's one of these. I don't know what would happen if we, if we tried to find by ID on the whole page, because there could be a lot of checkbox IDs on the whole page. For that given view, though, for that given table row, there's only one of them. No, if we, had, if we had more than one on the whole screen, and instead of looking for it in the table row, we looked for it in the table, or we looked for it uh, on the whole, whole page, the whole view. I'll bet you get some kind of error, because there's, or it would return an array of them, or something. I don't know. We'd, we'd, have to, we'd have to test that out if you're really interested. All right. At any rate, we know that our table layout has children. We're going to loop through those children. We're going to grab each table row. We're going to grab the checkbox and button from the table row. We're going to look to see if the, ta if the checkbox is checked. All right? If it's checked, then what do we want to do? Well, we're going to open up our shared preference editor um, to edit our shared preferences. And we are going to remove the tag in here that corresponds to the text that is on the text button. All right. Remember that this name here, that's the name of the tag. Oops, I didn't, I hope I didn't press it. Yeah. This text here, that's the name of the tag. So we got to grab the text from that button and we use that to remove the tag. I probably could make this code a teeny bit more efficient by moving this up here and this down here, all right? By moving this up here and this down here. Because there's, no there's no need to create a new object and apply each iteration through the loop. I just noticed that now. I can create my editor, I can loop through, remove the things that I want to remove, and then when I'm all done, I can apply the changes. Alright? Yeah. 
Well, again, we're taking the text of the button, right, because the text of the button contains the tag as it's stored in the share preferences. I wouldn't think so either, but get text complains. And it complains because it says it's a, actually a character sequence. <laughs> yeah. And if you were to ask me what the difference between a character sequence and a string is, I, I think I'd look and I'd say, you know, that would be a, a great thing for you to look into <laughs> and bring back to class on Tuesday. All right, because you're right. I, off the top of my head, I could not define the difference between a character sequence and a string. I was surprised at that as well, but you know, when in doubt, slap a two string on it, and that takes care of it. So, I, I just because I am ultra careful now that I made this change, I want to go back and verify it works one last time. Yeah, it's, it's almost like, yeah, it's almost like uh, a database where you have an update and a commit. Uh, you know, the, the remove or the add or whatever is like does a transaction, then when you're sure you want to do it, then you say apply. Just like in a database, you, you make your database updates, then when you're sure everything's okay, then you issue a commit. All right. The, the same sort of code was in there when we added a new tag. We, we created an editor, we applied it and then we committed it. All right. So then when I'm done, I apply my preference changes. I say, okay, get rid of everything in that view now. All right. And recreate it. All right. Right. What do you suppose would happen if I didn't do this? Well, let's find out. All right. Let's find out. Okay. So. No, none of the above. All right. So I have two things in there now. And, and you can't see them, so I have to take my word for it. Let's add a third thing in there. So I'm going to delete one of them. All right. What should I have when I'm done? I should have two of them, right? Yeah, I should have the first two. What do I have? I have I must be oh you know I must have accidentally set a break point Okay, so what do I have? I have five of them. So you have the original view. I have the original view, and then the new view, which is the two that are left over in my shared preferences. And it looks like the new view is the top, so it's... Well, it alphabetized them, probably, again. Now, if you started... Oh, no, it didn't.
All right. That's just a view. That's not really what's in the shared preference. Let's clobber this guy. Let's clobber this application. Notice, by the way, this shows 4K of data. That's probably our, that's probably like the minimum size we'll allocate for the shared preferences. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I couldn't point to exactly where it's stored. All right. Let's fire this up. And you're right, it only shows the two, right? Because the view and the shared preference file essentially got out of sync. All right. Now, you could argue, you could argue anything, right? Sometimes it's fun to do and sometimes it isn't. <laughs> yeah, well, what's our, what's our alternatives with this? The alternative is to do what I did, all right, and I said get rid of everything and then refresh, all right. If I really wanted to refresh, one thing I could do is I could put the remove everything in this uh, refresh buttons function, all right, and if it was null, yeah, I could put a remove everything right here, and if it was null, before you go and you create it, clear everything. I, I guess I could have done that. Um, the other thing I could have done is after I removed the, um, after, think Zellers, after I remove it from the save preferences, I could have moved that, removed that view from the query view, all right, the, the, the query table view. I didn't do that for a couple reasons, all right this view. In other words, if it's checked, I could have gotten rid of it from the save preferences. That's what this line of code does. I could also then remove something like this. Um, query table layout dot remove view and tell it to remove that table row. And that would then get rid of that row. Okay? Now why didn't I do that? Alright? I didn't do that for a couple reasons. One is, if I did that, I'd have to run the loop backwards, right? <laughs> right? Because I would be decreasing the number of children. Alright? Yeah, because each, each time, yeah, and that would make the code trickier, right? Because if I had five children and I remove one, then I have four. So, hmm, that would be confusing in, in running through the loop. That, could, that would actually mess up this parameter. Every time that, that is getting one, yeah, it's getting one less. So I'd have to store that in a variable and then run it backwards, all right? And you know what? They already have a function to do that, you know? That, that's the whole aim of these functions. Like there's a function to refresh the screen. I know that works. I'm just going to go and, and, and reuse what, what, what's, what's already there. So you, know, you could argue it and you could say it's, it's more efficient to do it that way. This was very cleaner code and it makes for very straightforward code. All right. The lesson, I guess, for you uh, in this, and the reason that I wanted to go through this, is, you know, get to know the classes. Get to know what the classes are composed of. Get to know, uh, get a sense of, like, what the methods are. You know, in this case, this said a few things. It says, views have children, all right? You can loop through those children and look at them. Um, you can... If you know what the child is, you can cast it to it. Otherwise, you could do some sort of test. 
All right? You can actually ask for the class of the child, and if the class of the child was a table row, then you could cast to a, ta to a table row. If it was something else, you could cast it to that. But here, the deck was rigged. All, I knew all we were putting in is table rows, or our table rows. So all I have to do is cast it to a table row. So our, child, our children are also going to be views, but we need to cast them to whatever they are to treat them that way. All right? Um, I guess in this case, I could have declared this as a view and that would have worked. All right? Because I'm not using any specific table row functions. All right? All the, all the functions I'm using on it are also applied to views too. So I could have just called this a view and not called it a table row. All right? And that would have worked as well. I then use the, the, the find view by ID. That's what we've been using all along to, if you have a view, whether it be the main screen or a view that's a child within a bigger view, you can use that find by ID to find the proper elements in it. And then again, uh, you know, a little bit of details with the, um, with the preferences file and then removing all the views and running the refresh. Questions about this? I guess, go ahead. No. Okay. I, would say, I guess the, the big lesson here is know the views. Start, start to get in and, and, and go through this. You know, I did this, you know, I, I'll confess, I haven't obviously been doing Android programming as long as I've done programming in other environments. So part of the reason I did this was like a challenge. It's like, okay, let's see, can I do this? You know, I'm going to ask my students to do something. Can I do it, you know? So I went through and it didn't take long, but really the revelation is to look and see, okay, what gets added to that are views. What are the things I can do with views? And then you find out you can get their children, you can find things within their children. Okay, then, then we're good to go. No, no. Yeah, you're just doing what, what, what we said, yeah. Um, this was just more of, a, of an extra challenge, you know. I, you know. I like to augment the book. I don't just necessarily want to cover exactly what's in the book and memorize that. Then you'll learn that application, but we, we want to learn and we want to extend it right. as well. Right, right, right. Well, again, it, it's sort of a, uh, a recursive thing. Views contain other views, and, and those views could contain other views, you know, and so on down the line. Yep, yep. All right, let's see. Sure. All right. Okay. Uh, hmm? And I want to display a number. Hmm? So obviously, what I've been doing is just saying. Oh, set string. Oh, so you want you want to set. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And then you could go like this and say. TB, TB, TB dot that text. Actually, I need to move this code up here. TB set text. X dot. It's a string, I think. Does that not work? Can I invoke two string on a print room type? Okay. Right, and that'll work. This this should also work.
There's another kind of double. All right? <laughs> double with a capital D. What's the difference between double with a capital D and double with a lowercase d? Well, no, either one of them could be a, a cast operator. Okay, the difference is, is the lower D double is a primitive. All right, so any, any uh, data type that you see that starts with a lowercase letter is a primitive. So Boolean starts with lowercase, int starts with lowercase, double starts. When you see a version of that name that starts with a capital letter, that's sort of a class version of that. All right, it's called a wrapper class. All right, and, and what it does is, is sometimes it's nice to have objects. All right, even if you're dealing with what otherwise would be a primitive. Uh, a notable example is an array list. All right, if you want to put items on, a, you know, an array list is a lot better than an array in a lot of respects. All right, but each element of an array list has to be an object. It, it, it can't be a primitive, all right? So what you can do is you can, you can then use the double capital D to make an, sort of an object version of it, and uh, then you can uh, add it to your array list. So it's, it's like a wrapper class, yes? So if you're defining the size, then you're defining I think actually it's integer, not int. Yeah. You're declaring an object, a double, right, right. Now, there, there's something called boxing and unboxing, right? What boxing and unboxing uh, says is that the compiler is smart enough to, like, let you cheat a little bit and let you take a, a double, capital D, all right, and treat it like it was a primitive, all right? Uh, and... Therefore, it does like that implicit conversion for you. Now, um, there are some circumstances I'd have to review to see exactly where you can get burned with that. If you do comparisons, because remember, comparing objects isn't the same as comparing values and, and so on. So it, that can give you misleading results, uh, if I recall correctly. But essentially, boxing makes it easy to use these, boxing and unboxing. So, for example, if you had a function that accepted a double, all right, I could call it with a capital D double, and it like does the implicit conversion for you. All right. I think you can go the other way. Yeah, I think if there was a function that required a double with a capital D, you could call it with a double, and and it would work. I'm pretty sure, anyhow. All right. But that's the, the boxing and unboxing aspect of it. And so yeah, in a pinch, to convert to string, since there is no two string on a uh, on a primitive double, if you made it a wrapper for double, then you could go and do two string. Crazy. <laughs> well, you did what well, you did works fine as well. Okay. All right. Let's look at a couple of pieces of functionality with this. We kind of glossed over the confirm dialog. I'll just point that out to you, and you can review the details on your own. All right, here's the confirm uh, dialog. That when you when you say you want to delete, it, it confirms that. Uh-huh. Not necessarily. Um, you could put your exceptions, anyway, you could put them just on a, a text label on the page. You know, if, 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 like, let's say, you know, let, yeah, yeah, let, yeah, let's, let's say, like in our, uh, what did we have? We had a tip calculator. Do we have a, was that this class we did a tip calculator? Yeah, yeah. I think I did uh, a uh, an exception. I, I trapped for an exception if if there was nothing entered in, and it just displayed hey enter some data or something like that in the result. So you wouldn't necessarily use a, a, an alert uh, for that. This is called. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, yeah, it, it probably is. The alert dialog, um, probably if it's called a certain way, um, it would, uh, you can probably configure the buttons on it, I would guess, to either have just an OK button or a yes and no button or whatever. Um, that's typically how these things are. Um, this is what's called a modal window. All right, a modal window being you can't like you got to answer the question now. You can't like interact with it. So it pops up and it, it, it uh, disables sort of uh, the rest of the app until you answer that question. So you got to do it in sequence. So that's the one thing. The other thing of the edit button. When you click the edit button. All it really does is it finds the parent of of that button. The parent being the bigger window. And then or no, the parent being the table row. Um, my my mistake. All right. And it goes in and it will set, it, it grabs the text and the search and simply sets those text boxes. So in other words, when you click edit, it finds the parent of that edit button, which is that row. It then finds the text uh, associated with it. And it pops that up into these things for you to edit. Feeds them up there, yeah. And it grabs the, the tag from the button. It grabs the query from the save searches screen. Remember, there's two parts to this. There's the tag, which is on the button. Uh, and then there's a query that exists behind that. Okay. Now, uh, the last thing I want to look at is is what? Ah, when they click the actual button, and when you click that button, uh, God knows I'm going to put I'm going to put a real query in here so I don't. With my luck, those random characters that I typed in are slang for something, and I'd get embarrassing Twitter search results or something. So I'm going to put in something I know, Android. That opens up Twitter. Pardon me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I'm opening up the browser. And it goes and does a Twitter search for Android, and it displays... Uh, the Twitter results for that. All right. Now, just for laughs, shoot, I don't have the cable for this. Do I have that app on here? No, I don't. You have to take my word for it. On my phone when I run it, it, because I have Twitter installed, it asks me do I want to open this with Twitter or with, a, uh, uh, with the browser. That is called a, uh, I believe it's called like an implicit uh, intent. Whereas, if you notice I click the, the button, does a very similar thing as the edit. It grabs the URL. It, it grabs the, the URL, it finds it, and it creates a new intent with that URL. All right. 
And the Android operating system knows, for example, if, you're, if the URL includes Twitter, that those intents can be processed either with the Twitter application or with the web browser. So on this machine where I don't have Twitter installed, um, it opens it up there. Just for, let's, just for laughs, let's go and install Twitter. Not really, no. What's that? Where do you see that? Oh. <laughs> oh, it's going to make me put a credit card number skip. There we go. Probably tonight. Yeah. <whistles> what the heck was that? Okay, I'm installing Twitter. Let's try this. Wasn't working like it was on my phone. I should have brought the. I should bring every single cable that I own every day to class. Okay, I'm not sure why this isn't doing what I expected it to. Again, you have to take my word for it. Um, with this, again, it's, it's a function of the operating system with this uh, intent. Yeah, the intent says, yes, I want to go and, and uh, access this URL. All right, and I'm giving it the the 
URL that I want to call, or actually URI, and then it starts the activity. So it starts a new activity with the intent of what it is that I want to do. But I haven't named like an application, so that's like Android's job to figure out how to open it, either in the browser or in Twitter in this particular case. Again, I believe they call that like an implicit uh, activity because you don't explicitly say, I want to open up the browser and go to this. I just say, I have this intent. I want to do it. And then I go uh, and, and access it and the operating system figures out. I see that a lot playing on, on with my Android. For example, if I, open, uh, if I get a, a photograph, uh, my daughter texted me a photograph, I can click on it and it will say, do you want to uh, um, uh, view it in, uh, do you want to view the image or do you want to um, um, go uh, open it up in, in uh, editing program, photo editing program that I have on my phone. So again, all those are implicit uh, um, intents where the operating system figures out what can open it and then it gives you a choice. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Questions about this? Um, you do have a quiz this week, all right? And the quiz will be available tomorrow through Tuesday. And it's online. It's not a big deal. I'd expect you all to do great on it. It's three short questions. Um, they're short in the sense that they don't require a page, but maybe a paragraph or so uh, about each one. They are uh, open-ended, um, you know, uh, advantages and disadvantages of doing A or B is, a, is one question I love to ask. All right, um, and I, uh, why do we do this, you know, the reasoning, the rationale behind it. And then I think there's one uh, question that asks you to explain some sentence, uh, some statements in, in a program. So in other words, I, I present a couple of statements, and then you say what those statements do. All right, questions? All right. I did get your email. I haven't looked at it yet, though. So I'll uh, certainly by next class, I, um, I'll, I'll post. Uh, uh, I, I would think by next class I'd have some sort of answer for you. All right.